20 years ago, I made a trading card game when I was just a kid. Now, I'm recreating it as a professional quality card game. Today, I'm working on the artwork for the cards. Plus, I'll talk about how I gather inspiration for our new designs and show you what went into creating the new cards. Ready? All right, let's make it. Hi, my name is Taylor Thomas Smythe, and I'm an author, designer, and creative. This is the second part in a video series where I am recreating a card game I created originally as a child. Now it's two decades later, I have at least a decade of graphic design experience under my belt, so I'm gonna recreate the game that what started out as just, you know, pencil and colored pencil sketches and layouts made in MS Paint, and I'm gonna move that into the present day and make these graphics a little more up to date and a little more modern and a little more professional hopefully. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out my channel. Make sure to like this video, the little thumbs up, subscribe, and ding the little bell so you don't miss the next part in this series. These are the cards I created when I was a kid. It's a thick deck of really big cards. Today I'm going to be working with some more advanced tools like Adobe Illustrator. I'll even share with you how I come up with inspiration for the cards themselves. And I'm gonna do my best to stay as faithful to the original ideas that I came up with back in 2001, 2002, but I'm also gonna put my own fresh spin on them. It feels like I'm always creating multiple projects at once and always have a lot of plates spinning, but a lot of it I have to do by myself because I'm a writer. It's kind of my main creative outlet and that's something that has to happen kind of on my own. So this is really exciting to be able to bring you guys into this process of creating this new card game. So I hope you find this exciting and insightful, but I'm really excited about this journey. In part one, I talked about just kind of the backstory of the game itself and I showed you some of the sketches and original ideas of what went into the game that I made 20 years ago. And I started to think about what the storyline could be. In that video, I focused a lot on my brainstorming process and coming up with the story for the new game. Um, I think it's really important for even a, something as simple as a trading card game to have a storyline, some sort of drama and conflict to it. I've got lots of ideas for it now. I'm thinking about writing a series of novels, some scripted podcast series, some other kind of merch and things like that. Um, but today we're going to talk about art. So I'm going to start out with going back to the original source material. That's my sketchbooks from 2001 and the original deck of cards that I created for Xbox. So to begin with, before I get into design, I want to make sure I look back at the original cards for inspiration. So here we've got kind of the original cards. They were pasted onto vibrant neon colored poster board with a little bit of glue, which this is 20 years old, so it's kind of coming off. The backs were just blank. That poster board had white on one side, color on the other. Um, so these are just to kind of look at what the cards looked like. Pretty simple and straightforward. So what I really want to do first is start gathering inspiration so that I can come up with an idea that I really like. I always like to start with Pinterest boards. So over the last several months, I've been curating a board full of ideas and inspiration for the Xbox kind of redo for this series. So the, uh, I just I found things I like, th styles I think that might be interesting, a lot of primary colors, some really vibrant kind of slightly off colors. This pin actually was, these little robots, was the image that actually inspired me to redo my game. I really like this kind of 2D style with the thick black lines. So I think I'm gonna be sticking with something like that, but um, just kind of wanna sift through some more ideas and just show you some examples. I like the grid on the background of that one, uh, some different colorful things. Um, I'm gonna save a few of these to my um, camera roll on my iPad and start to work and create a set of swatches um, But just want to show you a few more I really like these that kind of like lime green is really big for me um, Yeah, so I'm collecting ideas thinking ahead to um, For example these ones here that are a little more realistic like book covers are inspiration for whenever I want to maybe create some novels uh, related to the Xbox series um, some other cool colors. I like the glitchiness on that. Um, really like these bright colors, the purple, green, and orange. 
uh, and there's that kind of lime, vibrant green again that it's almost yellow, citron, I don't know if lime, whatever the color is. Um, also wanted to take a look at some actual trading cards like Pokemon cards. I'm um, just kind of looking at all the things they fit on a card. Um, they have lots of different text sizes. Um, so I'll be getting to this. First, I'm just going to start with um, figure out my color scheme and kind of general art style of the characters and things. So again, I'm really going to take inspiration from those bright colors. I think that would be a fun way to update and freshen these cards. They were black and white printed before, so the only color they really had was that vibrant color on the sides. So to build my color palette, I saved a few of those pins to my camera roll, just the images, and I compiled them into Procreate and just put them on one uh, layer all together. And then I created a new layer and used the eyedropper tool to just start creating kind of blobs of color. Um, I would just grab colors that I liked and um, kind of for each image, I would just kind of create a whole kind of palette of all the colors that were in it um, that I liked or thought that I might use. So I did a lot of this, did this for all these different images and kind of ended up with, you know, you can hide it and unhide it just so you can see what just the colors without the image underneath just to see if you're on the right track. Um, I did this with all of these images. And then when I was done with that, I, um, you know, again, was trying to find what colors will really evoke that, that kind of bright green, the kind of neon scheme a little bit, but then what colors would go with that. So I kind of just did trial and error and then narrowed it down to ones I liked. That's these on the bottom. Then I created like a thicker stripe just so they're easier to sample with the eyedropper when I get to using them later. Um, I just kind of put them in color order so I can kind of see how they all work together. I also created a few little combinations that I liked as well. So I'm going to export this and airdrop it to my computer. You absolutely do not have to go through this whole process to create a color scheme for your cards. Um, however, I just felt like that was the best way to kind of synthesize all of the ideas that I've been looking through and narrow it down to a more limited palette so that I, when I created my cards, they could feel like they're all in the same kind of family and they're using the same colors. So this is just one, I, one way of doing that. You can just kind of use the color palette that whatever software you're using already has in it. Uh, if you're making your cards by hand or something, you can, you know, draw them with colored pencils or whatever your favorite medium is, paint, and that's totally up to you. So next I'm going to open up Adobe Illustrator, which is for creating kind of vector images. We're going to create a new document in RGB color. Um, normally for any print things, I would use CMYK, but the Game Crafter specifically says you should upload RGB, PNGs, or JPEGs um, for the final file. So I'm just going to work in RGB. I also anticipate using a lot of these things for like web advertisements, social media posts. So just having an RGB, which is like kind of the web format is a good place to start. So I just placed that image from my iPad into this file. And I'm just going to use the eyedropper and create new swatches with each of these colors. And I'll kind of go fast here so you can see what it looks like after I've finished them. And I'm going to select them all, create a new color group just so I can organize them all together. And then I am going to actually save this as a swatch library so that I can access it later or in other software like InDesign um, or if I'm creating a new document in Illustrator. It's all very helpful to have it saved. So I'm gonna move it out of the way um, so I can make room to start creating some of the characters and shapes. I realized I did not save this, so always save. Next, um, now that we've got the colors, I'm gonna start working on creating the character artwork and style. Again, I'm gonna look at my original drawings for influence. Um, so you can see there's a lot of vibrant, interesting colors, a very specific palette of colored pencils that I used. Um, so they're a little bit, not quite as bright as the colors that I really want to use on these new ones. Um, but yeah, you just can kind of see there are a lot of different variations, the body types of the characters and the shapes um, and some other kind of doodads, these keys. Um, that I'll get to later. Of course, this is just one way to create character illustrations. Um, you can do them, you can make them hand-drawn. You can use something like Procreate to use a hand-drawn style, but to create it digitally, um, just for a little more crisp lines and easier kind of coloring and things like that. It's totally up to you. This is just one idea. This is the way I was felt inspired to use for this specific game. But I would love to hear how you're creating your card game. Feel free to share those in the comments. So I'm going to start just creating the shapes of the heads because I think that's a good place to start because those are going to be used throughout 
the whole game and um, and just it would help to have them all created at the same scale so um, I can kind of mix and match when I get to that point. So I'm just starting with creating just simple polygons, um, really not too complex. Illustrator again is a vector um, format so everything you do in here is based on points and lines basically and those create shapes and you can color them and do all sorts of different things with them. Um, this one kind of looks like Mickey Mouse as I'm kind of halfway through creating this kind of weird alien head looking thing, which is called a two bot in my uh, 20 year old, 20 years ago, 11 year old, 12 year old lingo. Um, yeah, so I've created these head shapes. I'm gonna now add the visors, um, which were kind of a staple of the, uh, the look of these. Um, so this is the hex bot, um, which is the hexagonal head. Um, so this one particular type of bot has that sort of like voice box mouth thing Whereas the other ones have like more traditional smiley face kind of mouths um, I really like the reflection that I added when I was drawing these as a kid So I'm gonna make sure that's a detail that I add in here. Um, just to kind of pay homage to that and Make it feel more um, true to the source material um, Yeah, so just creating different shapes and some of the visors are at different angles you'll notice that was just kind of trying to match up with um, both the shape of the larger shape that's inside of as well as looking back at the reference material and now that i've got the basic shapes i'm going to start moving toward coloring them i did a little bit of it between uh, screenshots here so uh pardon my moving quicker um i just wanted to keep it moving um so i'm going to add that kind of thick black line i think this weight looks really good. Um, these sort of colors feel really fun already, like very primary, um, kind of elementary school, like kids color scheme, which is kind of the goal for it to feel like that game I made as a kid, um, but also could be a trading card game that would be accessible to really any age. Um, so now that I've created all the head shapes, I'm gonna start with creating the body for this one, and then I'll kind of use that as the template to adapt to all the different body types of the different robots and I really am trying to keep it fairly simple so I'm trying to use existing shapes and polygons rather than create too many of my own shapes with the pen tool and if you aren't familiar with what the pen tool is I recommend um, go watch some how-to videos about Illustrator so you can learn how it works the pen tool is kind of like the fundamental thing you need to understand about how to use it um, you don't have to use Illustrator for your cards. I'm just really familiar with it, so I'm using it to create these characters, and I wanted this sort of vector line drawing style just um, to help it feel a little bit more um, kind of modernized. Um, so yeah, here's the first one, and comparing it to the original drawing, really proud of it. Um, I wanted to kind of look back. There's a bunch of other body types, shapes, um, all the different head shapes have different things, so um, I'm gonna create just kind of basic robots of all those different kinds. Uh, so now I've done that and I'm gonna kind of scroll over here so I can show you. Um, I was trying to testing out some different color combinations as well. Um, I really feel like these are true to my original drawings but add a little bit of extra detail and kind of crispness by them being vector style. Um, they just feel really fun and lively. So I'm really excited to uh, incorporate these into my cards um, yeah, so and then again, these are just the original six different head types of all the different robot styles And the last thing I was gonna do here is just look at I had these little Medallion shape things that I think each one kind of identified a different robot I don't know if I'm going to use them in the same way, but I went ahead and created some different shapes I could see this being sort of kind of like a, a language or like set of like an alphabet um, Or code that I could use in the game. So we'll see how that works. So I think we're well on our way to creating character designs that are gonna fit um, some new cards very well. They still kind of have the spirit of these old cards, but we're gonna refresh them. So just to recap, in this video, I showed you how I created and reimagined uh, vector art of the characters for this new card game. In next video, I'm gonna dive deeper into actually creating the card designs themselves, the layouts for cards. I'm gonna be using Adobe InDesign to do that and um, we'll be referring back to the Game Crafter a lot to see what their specs and dimensions and details are about that.
If you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe and give it a little thumbs up and make sure you ring the little bell so you get a notification and don't miss the next part in this series.